Well, good day, everybody. This is Chris of the Ancient Scholar. I hope you guys are doing well and enjoying your summer off. I'd like to break my summer hiatus to announce that I am going to be embarking on a new series of uh, videos, and these videos are going to be very unique, and they're going to be aimed more at people who find themselves in an instructional or pedagogical role. And that concept is a concept of item analysis. And what item analysis covers is it, it covers very broadly exams, test questions specifically. And what item analysis is, it is a series of statistical quantitative methods that can be used to determine how difficult an exam question is, first of all. And um, once you find out how difficult that is, then you have to figure out, well, why is it difficult or why is it not difficult? And there are some reasons why an exam item may or may, may be difficult. It may be difficult simply due to the fact that the distractors, and the distractors are the incorrect answers that a student could choose from if we're talking a multiple choice exam. Um, and that is specifically what I'm going to be focus on, uh, focusing on is item analyses uh, regarding multiple choice exam. So your, your distractors are answers that your student could choose that are incorrect. Is there something about the distractors that are that it may be confusing or may be more enticing than it should be? And that's what makes it a question difficult. Um, or perhaps the question is is truly difficult and it is assessing a highly complex topic. Um, likewise, a question might be too easy and it might be too easy because a distractor, for example, is easily is not very enticing. And how do we develop questions that are that have good distractors, have a good correct answer, have a good what we call a uh, root um, that asks the question, um, and then a good stem or, or, or a good answer. Um, so that's one part of item analysis is, is figuring out you know, what is the difficulty of your test question. But we need, to, we need more information than just is something difficult. The next major component that, uh, of item analysis that we want to talk about is how well can an exam or a specific item discriminate. And discrimination is the ability to, to tell a high performer, so someone who is doing very well in a class and has a very complex understanding of the material, we call those high performers, from what we call low performers, people that do not have a good grasp of the material, people who are not performing very well. And so discrimination is the ability for an item to tell or to kind of uh, t tell you who is doing, who is a high performer in a class and who is not a high performer, who has a good understanding of material and who does it. And when we, when we talk about positive discrimination, Positive discrimination um, is an item that positively discriminates or tells you a different the difference. Basically, uh, people who are doing well do better on them. People who are not doing well don't do better. And then you have what's known as negative discrimination. And negative discrimination is typically not uh, something that we aim to have in an item, and that is where your poor performers, your low performing students are somehow doing better on these test questions than your high performing students. And that typically means that something has gone very wrong with that question, it needs to be rewritten or something is very wrong with it. And then you have uh, kind of this, this, this area in between where, where both the low performers and the high performers are, are doing um, the same, roughly have the same. And this is, is a, an item that is not discriminating whatsoever and everybody pretty much does the same. Now, when we're developing tests, we don't want to develop a highly difficult test that has the highest amount of, of positive, positive discrimination because then really the only people that would be capable of doing uh, well on this test are going to be your high performers, which is okay um, but when you're looking at the top 20 to 30 percent of your students, if those are the only students that are able to pass this test, right, 
and then you're looking at 70, 80% of the class. So your, 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 your middle of the road performers, your intermediate moderate performers and your low performers are all, all failing this exam. Clearly that's not a good exam. So what we need to do is we need to have a balance. We need to have a range of questions of different difficulties and we need to have a range of questions that are well written that have good positive discrimination and then you have some other questions where you have kind of this intermediate amount of discrimination as well. And um, that's really what the, the meat of the discussion around that surrounds um, item analysis or stems from the concept of item analysis. It, that's where my discussion is going to center over really finding a difficulty, discrimination, and then we may talk a little bit about writing and rewriting test questions. So I really hope you guys will uh, enjoy this uh, series of videos that I'm going to be doing. Um, this will probably be the only vid video where you guys will see my face and the rest of it will be on the, uh, the, the electronic uh, whiteboard so I can draw the concepts and, and kind of give you a more intuitive understanding. Uh, this component, the next, the following videos or subsequent videos will be a bit more quantitative. However, the uh, amount of math should be fairly minimal. Uh, I may get into more advanced concepts and I may, as we get further along in, um, actually do some examples of item analysis. And um, I'm actually going to be using some, some newer software to help me in to gather the data and basically their pre pre um, pre program spreadsheets that I can just put my data in it'll crunch the data and it will come up with you know the uh, the difficulty index the index of discrimination and then uh, from there I'll just be able to interpret that um, after I do my item analysis so that's what item analysis is. Item analysis generally occurs after you've developed your exam and you've given your exam to your students, then you have to do an item analysis. And then what you do is you go back to your exam and you go to each item because you do analysis on every question. And then you look at these questions and you determine whether or not you need to change something about a question or maybe replace it in question entirely. And of course, item analysis is a constant uh, process that is occurring from semester to semester, year to year, class to class. So it's a constantly moving, changing process. And generally, as more and more and more people uh, take an exam and take the questions and you gather more and more data, the, your, your ability to determine good from bad questions should get better and better and better as you do it more and more and more. Okay guys, so that's the introduction to this new series of videos on item analysis. I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, you guys take care. And uh, as always, thanks for hanging in there.